Today in our 2018 Chevrolet Equinox, we're going to be taking a look at the Roadmaster Invisibrake Supplemental Braking System, part number RM-8700. And to help us in our installation, we're also going to be using the replacement vacuum line rubber hose for the Invisibrake System, part number RM-452136, and the Roadmaster Stoplight Switch Kit, part number RM-751489. So here's what our Invisibrake looks like when it's fully installed. The nice thing about this is, is once it's installed, there's nothing you're gonna need to do. No temporary boxes to remove, no adjustments to make. It's just put it in, get it installed, get it adjusted to the braking you like, and you're done. The control box here is where everything's gonna be taken care of. We're gonna be able to adjust our air pressure, which is gonna adjust the amount of force that our brake pedal is going to be applied. We're gonna have a gauge here that's gonna let us know how much pressure is being applied and we're gonna be able to fine tune that to our liking. Unlike a lot of other braking systems where we're gonna have a cylinder attached directly to the brake pedal, we're gonna have a pulley that's going to be attached. And it's gonna be attached to the cylinder and we can remotely mount that cylinder wherever we'd like. Now the nice thing about that is, is it's not gonna interfere with regular driving and everyday braking action because our foot's not gonna to have to worry about hitting that cylinder. Our braking system is gonna have a breakaway switch that comes with it. Now, I do wanna mention that the tow bar, safety cables, and other wiring here is not included in the kit, but in case of a catastrophic event where the motorhome gets disconnected from our Equinox, the breakaway switch is gonna apply pressure to our car, keeping it from going down the road. Now the car is not the only thing that's gonna be covered. While we're sitting in a motorhome driving down the road, we're gonna be able to monitor our braking that's going on in our Equinox by this monitor light right here. So whenever we apply the brakes on our coach, they're gonna be applied in our car, and whenever we let go, they're gonna let go and the light's gonna go out. We can tow our Equinox down the road with confidence, knowing that we're not gonna have any false braking situations. The way the Invisibrake works is that it's only gonna apply the brakes to our Equinox when the RV's brake lights are applied. Now, unlike a lot of those portable braking systems, we're not gonna have to worry about finding a 12 volt outlet, like one of those cigarette lighters inside the car, which potentially may blow a fuse and then we don't have power to our braking system. Our Invisibrake is gonna hook up directly to the battery so we have constant power and we don't have to worry about having the car with the key off and the ignition while we're going down the road. To sum everything up, what's really nice about our Invisibrake system is that it's gonna give you that fully automatic braking action. So whenever our brake lights come on our motorhome, they're gonna be applied to our Equinox, as well as the adjustable pressure setting at our control box. We're gonna be able to adjust anywhere from five all the way up to 80 PSI, depending on the application and your preferences. Once you find the setting you like, we're not gonna to have to make any adjustments and you're ready to go. And the biggest thing that's gonna set our Invisibrake apart is the fact that it's gonna be a completely permanent, out of the way installation that's not gonna interfere with normal driving when we're not flat towing our Equinox. So now that we've seen what our Invisibrake looks like and how it works, we'll give you a brief overview of how to get it in place. Our Invisibrake is an in-depth installation. Ours is already in place, but I left all the panels loose and all the connections visible so we can see how it's gonna go into place and the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to plan out your installation. To begin your install, you're gonna to come to your brake pedal and we're gonna have a couple brackets that we're gonna mount around our brake pedal and then you're gonna to wanna to get this as low as possible. And it's gonna to attach to this cable, which is gonna have a pulley on it. Now, the pulley needs to be in line whenever the brake pedal is depressed. Now they're gonna provide us with all the mounting hardware to get your pulley in place and you just wanna make sure that you have a nice solid point where it's going in. It doesn't really matter where you mount it. Like I said, it's just when the brake pedal is fully depressed, the cable needs to be pretty straight on that pulley. The easiest way to do that is if you actually push on the brake pedal and start the car, you can fully press it in and you can see that it's gonna be straight. Now coming off the pulley, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the cable's nice and straight, and they're gonna provide you with a clamp that you can go ahead and screw down into the floor or wherever it's mounted. And then you're gonna have this black coating around the cable, and eventually if we follow it underneath the carpet, it makes a giant loop that's nice and slow sweeping. You don't want any major kinks in it. 
and that's gonna attach to our cylinder, which we mounted over here on the left-hand side next to the dead pedal. And the way that's gonna be actuated is by the air lines. So we go ahead and follow this back, and I'll show you where it's connected to. So we just ran our air line coming along the back of door threshold here, from the front, going along the middle here, towards the back seat. And we're actually gonna be mounting our box underneath the rear seat, so we went around the back seat and then came back underneath to where we have all our connections made at the back of the box. Now at the back of the box, we're gonna have four major connections. The nice thing is, is they're all different sizes and they're all different plugs, so you can't misplace any of the plugs. So you can take out your four pole wiring, plug it in, your breakaway switch wiring, plug that in, and then on this end, you're gonna take some of that vacuum hose and you're gonna put it into the end of the box here and you're gonna take your quarter inch airline tube and plug it into that. And then that airline tube coming off of the air cylinder is gonna plug directly into the box. Now the trick with this is, is you're gonna push it in until it bottoms out and you give it a quick tug to make sure it locks in. Now we're gonna route all of these lines back the same way that we came with our hose coming off the air cylinder. So if we follow those lines, we're gonna follow them back towards the front of our vehicle. Then you're gonna to wanna to go up, and if you actually look up on the firewall, there's gonna be an existing grommet that we just sliced so we could pass all of these wires and airline tubes through to the engine compartment. Our grommet is gonna come out right behind our coolant tank here. Now, if you use a coat hanger or possibly that airline tube to push it through, you'll be able to tape all of your other stuff to the end of it and pull it through with a lot more ease because there's not a lot of room to get your hand in there. Now, the red and black wires that we passed through that was attached to the breakaway switch, the red wire, we're gonna put our inline fuse in place and we're gonna attach it directly to the positive post of the battery. The black wire that's also attached to that is gonna be attached to a ground wire on the negative post of our battery. Now, the four pole wiring is gonna be a little bit different. You're gonna need existing wiring for your flat toe setup to already be on there. And we left ourselves a slight loop. Now that four pole wiring, if you can see, we had it connected together, but then we added in our wiring from our kit. So you're just gonna connect them you're gonna cut your existing wiring and connect two ends on one side and one end on the other side. With the ground, I did add another ground in there even though it's already grounded at the back, but it's never a bad idea to have an extra ground. Now, as far as that airline tube that was coming from our box, then we went through the firewall along with all those wires, we are gonna to have to tap into our vacuum system of our car. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to find the brake booster, which is gonna be right behind this reservoir. And we're gonna find the hose that's directly attached to it, which is gonna be this one right here with the cloth covering on it. And our kit is gonna come with a T connector, which we have in place right here, as well as a check valve. Now it's gonna be a little hard to see because it's already in place, but that check valve is gonna have a red band on it you wanna make sure that that red band is going towards the engine and away from the brake booster. So what you're gonna do is, is, since this is a hard line that we connected to, you're gonna take that rubber hose that comes with our kit and that extra one that we got, and you're gonna cut your hard line and you're gonna insert it into that rubber hose. And then you're gonna have your check valve, another rubber hose, your T connector, another rubber hose going back into your hard line that's originally there, and take another section of that quarter inch vacuum hose and put your airline in just like we did at the back of the box. Our red and black wire is also gonna have this thicker black cable type of wire attached to it with a connector on the end. Now that's gonna be for our breakaway switch. So you're gonna to wanna to route this towards the front of the vehicle and we chose to go right next to the battery and we actually went underneath our headlight here. And again, if you take a piece of airline tube or a coat hanger, it's gonna make it a lot easier. And you're gonna come down and we passed our wire through, coming down behind the grill in the bumper area here. And we ran it over and we mounted our breakaway switch right here where there's a spot 
on our base plate. Now this breakaway switch is just a safety precaution in case anything were to happen and our vehicle were to break away from our motor home, this pin will be pulled and it'll activate our brakes. So now that we've seen a brief overview of how everything needs to be connected and a general idea of how you're gonna route stuff, all we need to do now is go back and mount our box. Now there's a couple different options you have to mount your box. We chose to take some hook and loop fasteners because it's gonna grab into the carpet nicely. Or you have these tabs here to where you can bend them down, you can cut a slit in the carpet and kind of work its way in there so it hooks into the carpet. Or you can actually take some self-tapping screws and just go right into the floorboard of the vehicle. So we're gonna go ahead and get our box in place and start cleaning up all of our wires. Now whenever you do mount this, the only thing I do wanna mention for sure is that wherever you mount it, you wanna still be able to access the adjustment knob and be able to read the PSI gauge to make any adjustments necessary later on. I'm gonna start hiding our wires, cleaning everything up, and putting all the panels back in place. And when you're putting your panels back in place, just wanna make sure that you get the wires behind them and you don't cause any damage to them. Now, one thing I do wanna mention, is you'll see right here, we do have a little notch cut out in our carpet. You're gonna to need to cut a small notch out so that pulley can fit and that cable's not gonna be rubbing on the carpet there. Now there is one more component that we need to put in place. Our Invisibrake is gonna come with an indicator light that's gonna light up inside of our motor home. Now we chose to wire our directly into the electrical socket here, but if you don't, you're gonna have a single wire that's gonna to connect to the umbilical cord here that's gonna go in between our vehicle and our motor home. And it's just gonna have the female end version of this, and we're gonna wire it back into the cab, same way we routed our breakaway switch out. So we're gonna go back, going back along the bumper, behind the headlight again, and in through that grommet. So here we have that wire. Now this wire, we're gonna end up tapping into our brake switch, and it's gonna go to the cold side of the brake switch, so it's gonna know what's going on with the pedal. A lot of braking systems are just gonna rely on the air cylinder, but this one's gonna actually let you know if the pedal's moving and what position it's in. But since our Equinox doesn't have a traditional style brake switch on it, we're not gonna be able to tap directly into the brake switch, so we're gonna put in a stoplight switch ourselves. To begin our installation, we're gonna to need to remove this ductwork here. There's gonna be a push pin fastener holding it in place right underneath the dash. I'm gonna grab a trim panel tool or a flathead screwdriver. You're just gonna to wanna to come underneath the push pin and start working it out. Once you have that loose, you're gonna pull out towards the outside edge and that duck rope will come out. Now, if we come underneath just to the right of the steering column, but to the left of our brake pedal arm itself, there's gonna be a nut. Now we're gonna be using a 13 millimeter socket to pull it off. Might be a little difficult to see, but this is the location that we're gonna be using to mount the bracket for our switch. So we're gonna grab our bracket. That's gonna be an L shape. There's gonna be a slight bend in the top where the hole is. We just wanna make sure that that L section is gonna to go towards the passenger side. That way we know it's positioned correctly. Then we're gonna grab our switch itself. And we go ahead and unthread the nut that's on there. And take the star washer off with it. And with that section facing towards the passenger side, we're gonna put our switch through the bracket and replace that nut and washer. Now right now, we just wanna get it on there hand tight. We don't have to tighten it down all the way. Because once we get it mounted, that's when we'll be making our adjustments. So you just want it on there snug so it's not moving around too much on you. Now this top hole, that's where we're going to be sliding it over the stud and replacing the nut so that our bracket and switch will be installed just like this. And then you're going to want to take that factory nut and thread it back into place. We can come back with that socket and snug everything up. With our switch loosely in place, we're gonna start dealing with the wiring. You're gonna to wanna to strip back both ends of the wire. 
One of these wires is gonna be for our power source and the other wire is gonna to go to our braking system for our signal wire. We'll go ahead and start with our signal wire, which is gonna be that wire that we ran through the firewall. And that's gonna to go to our braking system. So we're gonna estimate about how much wire we need and we can cut the end off and strip it back. And we can take one of the provided buck connectors and we can attach it to the end of our wire. And the other end of our buck connector is gonna to go to one of the wires coming out of our switch. It doesn't matter which wire we use, just we're gonna use one of the wires coming out of the switch. The other wire, we're gonna grab the other included buck connector and we're gonna go ahead and attach it to the other wire coming off our switch. Now on the other end of our buck connector, we're gonna grab the provided length of red wire they gave us in our kit and strip it back and crimp it down. So we're gonna take our red wire to a 12 volt power source we're gonna have a fuse panel underneath the hood that we're gonna be able to tap into. So if we just pull back the carpet a little bit, move it out of the way, we're gonna see that we have a grommet that we already used to pass through some wiring. So I'm gonna take an airline tube that I had laying around, and you can use a coat hanger if you don't have an airline tube available. But we're gonna pass it through the grommet and have it come out in the engine bay. Now on the other end of our airline tube, we're gonna attach our red wire so that we can go in the engine bay and start pulling it through. I'm gonna feed it into the airline tube a little bit, take a small piece of electrical tape and secure it down. Now we can move it to the other side and start pulling it through. So our airline tube came out right behind our coolant tank our grommet's gonna be really hard to see, but it's right behind there on the firewall. So we can start pulling our wire through. Once we have it out, we're gonna to wanna to make sure we pull all the slack out of it. And make sure it's not tangled on the inside either. With our wire in their engine bay now, we're gonna to move towards the front on the driver's side. We're gonna have our fuse panel right here. So we can go ahead and pull the cover off. We can set it aside for right now. We're gonna grab our circuit tester and we're gonna be testing for a fuse that has constant power even with the ignition off. So it looks like these two 20 amp fuses would be a good choice. So this one on the very end here, that's gonna be fuse number 48. That's gonna be for our wiper in the rear but as you can see, we're getting power to it constantly. So we can go ahead and pull that fuse out. Just gonna grab a pair of needle nose pliers, pop it out, and we can grab the included fuse tap that's in our kit. Now it's very important that you take your factory fuse and you're gonna put it closest to the top or away from the prongs, closest to the wire if you're looking at it. So we can take our fuse, slide it in, now we can take the provided fuse that's in our kit and put it in the bottom section. And then we can take our wire, we're gonna route it over towards the area that we're gonna be plugging it in and estimate about how much we're gonna need. So this is just gonna plug in like we would normal with the fuse and kind of just get a general idea of where we're gonna route our wire and strip back the end and cut off any excess that we don't need. We can take the end of our wire put it in the pre-installed buck connector on the end of our fuse tap. We can take our fuse tap, plug it back in to that factory spot, and then we can just start routing our wire through our fuse panel, making sure it's not gonna interfere with anything. We may have to cut a notch in the cover to make sure that that wire fits on. So to test, we can go ahead and take our cover, it seems like it's locking in place without having to cut a notch, but for good measure, we'll go ahead and cut a notch right here so it doesn't crush the wire. At this point, we're ready to adjust our switch. So you're gonna wanna grab a 17 millimeter and a 14 millimeter wrench, and those two nuts on either side of the bracket, we're gonna either loosen and tighten them to draw the switch out farther away from the arm or closer in. Now, how much adjustment is gonna be determined by how close it is to the arm. The way we're gonna know we have it adjusted properly is if we take our tester to the black wire coming off the switch, 
if we get a signal when we push in just an eighth of an inch. Once you have your switch adjusted all the way, you're gonna to wanna to tidy up your wires. You're gonna make sure that they don't interfere with anything underneath the dash. And just tidy them up, tie them to some existing wiring or whatever you have available. And then also tidy up the wires under the hood. With everything tidied back up, we will go ahead and put our ductwork back in place. The easiest way to do this, you're gonna slide it from the driver's side and slide it into the center console area where the hole is. It may take a little bit of work to get it lined up can't really see too much but then once you get it lined up over there then we just pop it back into the clips push that plastic push pin back in place now the monitor light for our RV normally you would mount this cable just like on the car and the bullet connector would be hanging out at the back but since we did hardwire ours into the connector at the front of our car it's gonna run through the seven way on our RV now the way we wired ours up on the car is we used the open port for the brake controller. So it's gonna run into the signal that should be for our brake controller, but we don't have one in our RV, so we're gonna be using it for our monitor light. So if you already use that cable, you're gonna route that cable underneath, you're gonna come up through the floorboard, and eventually you're gonna find a spot on your dash to mount that monitor light we, like we have here. Now to get that light in place, you're gonna to have to drill a 5 16 hole in the dash, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure there's nothing behind there. Now, the light's only gonna have two wires on it. You're gonna to have to ground it out. That second wire is gonna to attach to your brake controller signal wire, which you should be able to find underneath the dash on your motorhome. Now, the monitor light is also gonna come with an audible alarm. Now, wiring that up is gonna be extra easy. You're just gonna attach the wires color for color on the monitor light as well. And this light should come on any time that the brakes inside of our Equinox are being applied. That way we can keep a close eye on what's going on in case anything were to happen while we're driving down the road. With our Invisibrake fully installed and our motorhome hooked up to our Equinox, we're ready to hit the road. And that'll finish up your look at the Roadmaster Invisibrake Supplemental Braking System, part number RM-8700 on our 2018 Thanks for watching and click the link in our description below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com. And leave us a comment if you have any questions.